Welcome back to Social 20-1 Lesson 5, World War One. We're going to be looking at primarily Outcome 2 today, uh, the timeline, the key events of the war. Uh, but note we're also going to mention Outcomes 3, 4, and 5 because they're kind of secondary outcomes at best. So there is an activity here with regards to Outcome 2. I bet you can predict it. It's creating a timeline, isn't it? Yes, it is. So there's a few ways that I'd recommend that you go about collecting your information for this timeline. One way is to look at the six minute quick recap of World War I. The ones in gray will also help you a lot, but they're a little more detailed. Another excellent uh, video to consult would be the videos attached to this website. So what we have here on this website is a timeline of the major events. So the timeline is down on the side and you can uh, briefly describe them and then if there's something that you're like, yeah, you know what, I don't really get it. I don't understand the significance of the conscription introduced in Britain or the Battle of Verdun or the Battle of Jutland or the Battle of the Somme, then you can click on the related video. Some might not be available in our location. Looks like quite a few of them <laughs> won't be available in our location. But some might be. So that's exciting. We can talk about that one here. Yeah, a lot of them won't be available, but there is a timeline here for you for sure. Another way to collect the timeline is to use my timeline that I have here as a starting point and there will be some related videos as well. So the first thing I want to mention is that when the war gets started there's a false hope and a, a misunderstanding of the modern nature of warfare that it's going to be quote unquote over by Christmas. So the war begins August of 1914 and many soldiers are worried that they're not going to get there in time. The second thing to identify in terms of this timeline of the war is why England gets involved and how Germany doesn't achieve its quick victory on the Western Front. We mentioned this in the last lesson, didn't we, about the Schieffelin plan. And as the, the nature of the war becomes more trench, more, more, more static, more defensive, a war of attrition. So here we have a, a map now, and you can see that the Germans put most of their forces on the Northern Army to sweep through Belgium, encircle Paris, and then knock them out of the war. But as they sweep through Belgium, that's going to pull neutral Britain into the war to defend the, the, the neutrality of Belgium. And then um, the British Expeditionary Force along with the Belgians are going to delay the Germans just long enough so that the French can rally their troops at the Marne River, save the city of Paris, and then push the Germans back in a race to the sea and dig down for a trench warfare. This is a cartoon showing Belgians saying, yeah, you know what, you don't get an easy pass through us. Here's more information on the September 1914 miracle of the Marne. So Germans advance quickly. Um, among other acts of heroism were the 600 taxis that brought troops to the Marne from Paris. There's even, you know, descriptions of people on bicycles giving people a ride so that they could go and, and fight in the battle to save the city of Paris from the Germans. And here's some propaganda commemorating this great French victory, the Battle of the Marne. Uh, interesting to note, although they do um, dig into trenches by the end of September on the Western Front, by Christmas the war isn't over, but there was a Christmas truce. Uh, you know, it wasn't uh, negotiated. It was just that the soldiers on both sides had felt uh, the need to go and celebrate with their opponents. There will be no Christmas truce in 1915, 16, or 17 because by then uh, the, the months become years of war and there's just too much animosity between the sides. Starting in 1915, we're going to see uh, the use of poison gas on the Western Front. This helps us think about the question, you know, should there be rules to war? And this is during the Battle of Ypres, and this is the first battle for Canadians in Belgium.
chlorine gas was used for the very first time by the Germans, even though gas was outlawed since 1899. And despite the attack and gas, the Canadian line won't break. 6,700 Canadians will be killed, wounded, or captured at this battle of Ypres, um, but we will hold the line. Um, Germans are getting desperate here, right? They, they're trying to break through those defensive lines and they're using whatever resources that they have, including this illegal chlorine gas. But we're also seeing the fighting spirit of the Canadians at Ypres and the fighting spirit of the Allies to defend France. Now, it's not just a European battle. There are events happening elsewhere around the world. And beginning in February 1915, we have the Gallipoli campaign against the Ottoman Empire. The Ottomans are on the side of the Germans and the Austrians in this battle. And uh, this Gallipoli campaign will feature um, some of the colonial troops from New Zealand and more famously Australia. And it is going to be a bloodbath at times. And the Australians are going to pay a heavy toll for their role in the war. So the British and the, the Australian and, and New Zealand forces are attacking here at the Gallipoli Peninsula and they're trying to get supplies to Russia to keep, to keep Russia into that eastern front of the war. The Gallipoli campaign will cost the Allies over 187,000 killed and wounded and the Turks 160,000. Gallipoli proved to be the Turks greatest victory of the war. In London, the campaign's failure led to the demotion of Winston Churchill and contributed to the collapse of the Prime Minister's government. In 1915, a key event is going to be the sinking of the Lusitania. And this is key because it is going to help eventually pull the Americans into the war. The Americans were supplying the British, but they're still officially neutral. But the sinking of this passenger airline is going to create um, a turn in public opinion in America and uh, it's going to turn the uh, attention against being um, neutral and force the Americans into the conflict as you know the sinking of Lusitania will include the, the death of children and that's going to um, get the public attention in America as we see here with this cartoon. We also have a conscription crisis that grows uh, throughout the British Empire and by 1916 we're seeing this campaign um, with regards to the conscription crisis in Australia. Vote no mum, they'll take dad next, vote no, don't allow them to have conscription kind of thing is the emotional appeal of this cartoon. Uh, justifying conscription to promote the cause of liberty is one of the most bizarre notions ever conceived by man. Forced servitude with the risk of death and serious injury as a price to live free makes little sense to people. You know, in order to be free, you must go murder someone. So we got some some other visuals on that. Going back, we have the Battle of Verdun. Um, I'm gonna leave this one for you to take a quick a quick peek at one of those two videos. So there's a couple of videos queued up there for you to take a peek at. Battle of Jutland is the key uh, naval battle of the war, and uh, here's an illustration of the forces involved. And uh, you know, it's one of those things that at the end of the Battle of Jutland, the German navy, aside from the U-boats, they kind of retreat back to port for most of the rest of the war. Battle of the Somme is another key battle. I'm, I'm going to leave you that link to take a peek at, so you can understand more about the nature of that battle and the significance of it. America finally enters the war in April of 1917. And you can see here again the Lusitania is what pulls America into the war. That the, the sinking of that passenger air, air, passenger um, ship. Some cartoons about America entering the war. There's a video for you to see the significance of it. Another 10 minute look. So take a pause, look at the video, you'll learn more about the significance of of the Americans. Now, uh, towards the end of the war now, we have the November 1917 Russian Revolution that's going to drop, eventually drop the Russians out of the war. There's a three-minute video for you to watch of that.
You've already watched the video on the Battle of the Somme, but if you haven't heard of the Battle of Passchendaele, you might want to take a peek at that one. And finally, in 1918, the, the Germans do try to knock the Allies out of the war before the Americans can get involved too much and have a, a quick, sudden spring offensive. Um, and there's a good video there for you to watch. And the final 100 days of war here in the September of 18, leading to the armistice. And the armistice is in 1918. A good video there to, to look at as well. Everything in green. Take a peek, see if you can learn more information about those events. Again, the key isn't to memorize all of the dates here, but to understand the flow of the war. Understand how the links, the events link together, and the, the power of nationalism to convince both sides to, to fight in this war against each other. Um, as an aside, here's some things to consider. Um, these are you know optional assignments. You know, an inquiry, is war ever justified? There's a link there that you could read through and create a T-chart summarizing the two positions being, being presented. And students would also have the option to, and you don't have to do either of these, but you have the option to working on uh, an investigation into the psychological dimension of war. You know, with its psychological dimension, war can never be a science, and even as an extension of policy, it is a blunt instrument. The fact that slaughter is a horrifying spectacle must make us take war more seriously, but not provide an excuse for gradually blunting our swords in the name of humanity. So if you wish, you could write an essay on that for me. Some other terms that come up, like propaganda and war bonds and, and its ability to dehumanize the war. If you don't understand what propaganda is, do take a peek at that video as well. Here's some examples of propaganda, right? Like, instead of them being shown as the Germans, they're being shown as monsters. And in order to fight them, we must buy li liberty bonds, even if this is the fourth run of the government to convince us to buy these bonds. And as I typically do, I always put some extra content at the end. There's some more thoughts on the psychological cost of the war. I created a video on it. And uh, there's actually a couple of videos on that idea. And this idea of the fraternity, the brotherhood of mankind that we see in war. Finally, war does create a lot of social change. There's a great video here at the end about the change of the role of women as it, as it comes from the war. So in the end, this is what I need you to have from the war. You understand the nature of the war, how it was different, a world war, a war of attrition, a trench warfare. I want you to understand the human and the financial cost of the war. I do want you to timeline the events of the war, but not to memorize the war history here, but understand the flow of events, understand how nationalism fuels the war. I want students to have an opportunity to explore the ethical and the psychological side of the war, and finally to understand the social results of World War I.